Man, did I have a great conversation this morning with quite a few women. And I also was reminded by my husband about this movie we watched last night called When in Rome, 1952. True story. And it's about a priest who gets on a ship with a criminal and they bunk together. And when they get to the port in Rome, they were in New York, when they get there, the guy steals his identity. He steals his clothes and, and starts faking that he's this priest. And it's, it's actually based on a true story. So it goes on and on. The priest is so upset and offended and the cops and him are both trying to catch this guy. He finally runs into him because there's this big celebration at the Vatican. So um, he runs into him. He's trying to snare him and get him to turn himself in and all that. Anyway, he starts loving the guy's soul and, and it becomes a real problem. They, they're actually in a, they're actually in a, um, an alley and the cops are gonna arrest him and the priest is trying to help him really. He wants to help him <laughs> instead of that cabin be caught. And they break down, they break open this door that's been shut for a hundred years to this monastery where the, the people in there, I think it's called a cloister, these guys don't talk. All they do is pray. They pray for the world's sins and they pray for their own sins and they're kind of in there just doing penance, trying to be holy. And he and so he he's going to stay there and it's a bit like prison, right? I mean, it looks like prison. He gets in there and he thinks, oh my gosh, this is like the prison I, I got in and I'm going to go back to for the rest of my life. This is horrible. But he ends up actually kind of getting converted in the movie. You know, they, they both get out and and eventually the priest finds him again. Okay, the, the cops never catch him. The priest finds him again and he's there back in the monastery. And so... The, he's talking to because all the pre, all the other guys in there, the monks, can't talk to each other at all. They never talk. They only talk to the superior when they have to. It's a silent monastery. <laughs> so when he uh, when the priest goes in there and finds him, he's talking to the head guy, saying, "This guy can't really be sorry. He can't be truly repentant. He actually." decides to let him confess his sins to him and it's really powerful because the guy's very sincere about confessing his sins. I may not have all the facts right because I was in and out of this movie, but I wanted to read the last part of it. So he finds him and the guy writes to him on a note, prison was all past with no future and this place is all future and no past. I mean, it was so powerful. I mean, I even got goosebumps just reading that again. And so I want to talk for a minute and not, I want to try to make this short, but I want to talk about the wiles of the devil against our soul because we had a really, so I want to get back to the door because we've been talking about doors, the portal to heaven, you know, when we pray and we pray sincerely, believing God's the good guy in our movie and we can do his will and he wants to help us do his will you know he actually ends up hearing our prayers so let's see if i can open this the whole way mm, for some reason this isn't working so let me just try to move this over this is a bear trap and i and i put on here there's two ways that satan trapped eve one she made light of god's word Two, she didn't care about Adam and how she was about to affect him. There was the downfall of selfishness. And so it goes on and on and on and on. And so we were talking this morning about, again, being in the school of the spirit, being a portal to heaven, a door, because we're, we're part of God's government and not Satan. Satan is the slander and he came to get us to slander God and each other, sorry. So that's his only motive, is to get us to look down on each other, look down on God. And because our life is our own, we get offended with people, right? That aren't making us happy. And we get, actually get snared by the devil ourselves. First of all, 
because we don't judge the demonic spirits that we're making a place for. Name that spirit. If I say something, if I'm thinking something that's off and wrong, that's part of a dark government of Satan, offended with God, offended with man, you know, that's how we know we're in Satan's government, right? And we go, need to go knock on the door, that hundred, <laughs> this, this door in this movie, it, I think it's the real place too. So the door, the door looks like it weighs about 10,000 pounds and you can see why probably it hasn't been opened in a hundred years, but all we have to do is ask, seek, and knock. And because we don't, we stay stuck. And once we re neglect and refuse instruction and go astray because we don't take our thoughts captive, then we're just taking everybody else down too. So we were talking today about the devil's will actually is to vex us, to torment us. He's going to snare our soul, right? And there's scriptures about the snare of the devil. I don't want to take the time to read them, but I may put some stuff in the comments on this video because I just want to make the quick point. Every day the devil's trying to get in our head to do his will. And if we don't name the spirit, nor do we pick up the word because Jesus got the word. He used the word to fight the devil. The devil was trying to take a seat in his heart, right? And you know what he did? He put the word of God there on that seat instead of giving the devil a seat. Our problem is we make a place for the devil. We resist God and submit to the devil, right? When we should be submitting to God and resisting the liar, the slander, the looker down on her, the raka, you fool with your brother. And really, I was thinking about what is that bear trap, that snare? It's to get us to bear grudges, be bitter, be offended. And really, you can see, again, the downfall of the human soul in the parable of the sower. That God gave us the ability to knock on the door, to ask, seek, and find the gold, right? He gave us the gift of the Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the God of all truth, the Holy Spirit of truth, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. So, our only problem is actually human slothfulness we don't take the time to take our thoughts captive. And when something off comes out of our mouth, we lie to ourselves. We don't tell ourselves the truth and neither do we go to the word. So this morning I had a friend that actually was given the, getting the scripture in the movie of her life. You know, that's one of the biggest downfalls I've ever seen in anybody I've known in 38 years. There is no getting the scripture in the movie of their life for the prince and the power and the ruler of darkness that torments them. So they're just used by Satan to torment everybody else too. To that one of it says to uh, suck out the life. I mean, I can't remember the. it's in Daniel. It says to wear out the saints because if we get vexed by Satan, and we don't take any time to judge ourselves and we put a gun. A pro there's a proverb that talks about that too. I went by the field of the slothful and the woman who had no understanding and her brains were full of dark thoughts, right? Weeds, a little sleep, a little slumber. Gonna just all go to sleep and pretend like this isn't happening. Get somebody else to save me. I know that God will just whack me over the head someday and he'll take all my thoughts captive for me. Yeah, good luck. That day is never happening. Because man shall not live by bread alone. That's the problem. You can really see people that are in love with the powers of darkness because they don't have any bread. They don't have any revelation. They don't give you a scripture about real-time reality in their life. And they're not part of the addiction of the fellowship of the saints, which is almost like a, a potluck where everybody's got a dish to bring because they're making judgments and they're hearing from God about the cobwebs in their head and the stuff that comes out of their mouth. So the biggest snare here is bearing a grudge, saying raka, judging somebody the way we don't want to be judged ourselves. Judgment without mercy. Little children have some things in common. And this is what I was talking about, our spiritual life together. You know, we're all suckers, takers, users when we're born into this world. So are we when we are born into the kingdom of heaven. We're suckers, takers, and users. Hopefully we grow up to be reconcilers because we get reconciled to God ourselves. And you know, we had such a powerful time talking about not being offended, exercising our conscience to not be offended with God and man. That's exactly what Eve did not do. So she got taken captive by the devil at his will. 
She didn't give a rip about how she was affecting Adam. And she was willing to slander God, be fearful, unbelieving, fretting. All demise happens there. Therein is the takedown. So really, our biggest problem is total spiritual slothfulness. I went by the field of the slothful and the one that didn't give any rip at all about getting understanding. It's can everybody else do that for me instead, please? So we don't fight for our own spiritual integrity and then we just take everybody down. And we've been talking about even living in that kind of entitlement where I can let whatever I want to go on in my head and my heart. And then I'm entitled to just walk into your soul with all the dirt and junk and <laughs> stuff on my face. And, you know, it's kind of like the demise that would have happened to Esther if she walked in all dirty and filthy with food all over her face and her hair all messed up and rags on and tried to get the, the, the king to raise his sepulcher. So again, women are called to be the voice of wisdom. It's all through the Proverbs. And the only way we can do that is if we actually make judgments. The spiritual woman judges all things and not make judgments that condemn God and condemn our brother. Because therein we are like bearers that are sniffing meat and getting stuck in a trap. Once we start bearing a grudge, once we start looking down on, once we start thinking that people are our problem, people are not our problem ever. The demons people let into their skin is our problem. But Jesus wanted us to do one thing. The most important thing to him was wash feet, right? Can't do that if we don't understand the demon ourselves. We have no testimony. You know, and so what a lot of women have helped me and my in my spiritual walk is understand my own personal testimony about how demons work. And when we have fellowship with each other, because we're getting this day, our daily revelation from the Holy Word of God, because we're hiding his word in our heart so we don't sin against him. Then we become part of the first Corinthians 15. I think it says they were addicted to the fellowship of the saints. Then we're walking in the addiction that's saving our, our rear end. And we're having a continual feast with those people that are getting their crumb and sharing their crumb, their slice of bread with each other. And those are the people that are fathering, mothering, sistering, and brothering everybody into a new family. So there's just demonic protocol and there's kingdom of God protocol. And if we don't know the difference, we're going to walk in the old man. We're going to be like the criminal in the movie that never changes and is just on the run from our crimes. Guy could have ran in the streets of Rome his whole life being a runner because a lot of people are. And, you know, when, when he went into the captivity of God's kingdom, his, the glorious light of the gospel, we should be walking in the new man. We should be walking in the newness of life and being able to have the ministry of reconciliation. So I'll end it with this. This is one thing I said. You know, there's a really powerful scripture that I read years ago. Because you didn't serve God with, the, with, the, with gladness and joy for the abundance of all things, you'll serve your enemies. So I've never seen God's children as my victimizers. I've never seen them as the source of my unhappiness. I've seen them as people, souls with a destiny walking into my heart that I have an obligation to. So I look to Jesus to show me how to fulfill that obligation to them because they're eating their own poison or they're thinking their demonic thoughts are tormented. They're overcome by the devil because they don't take God, their thoughts captive and they don't get the word because he sent his word and healed us and delivered us from our destructions. So how do you know the people that are being delivered from their destructions and being healed from the people that aren't being healed or delivered from their destructions? They don't get real scriptures about real life that they're living in. Because all the powdered puff scriptures that we want to get and read the Bible for 20 hours, but never get anything personal about here and now and our walk now. Because this, it boils down to this. We're going to be a door in every situation of heaven or hell. And we're going to, and we're going to slap people around with the law like little kids can judge each other. 
If I speak with the word of men and angels and I have not love, I'm a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. So what every woman of God, every woman that God sent me into their life, and a lot of them have been tormented, has only helped me understand clearer the log in my eye and still does today. Because it's not just a one-way street where I'm judging somebody else to save them and help them understand the prince, the power, and ruler and give them my testimony and how I got forgiven and the word that saved me. It's about me getting a little more light to my darkness too. So everything, everything that seems bad can all turn to good because when you walk in the spirit, and what does that mean? When you get God's word to heal you and deliver you from your destructions, that's walking in the spirit, isn't it? Hiding God's word in your heart so you don't sin against him. Exalting his thoughts instead of your own. His ways instead of your ways. That is what walking in the spirit actually is. It's getting the scripture that is bringing you life. Those that heed reproof and instruction are not only in the path of life, they are. Those who neglect and refuse it go astray. And they are the portal of hell, the door to hell for everybody else taking them down. So in the end, it's kind of choose this day who you're going to serve. Choose what demon you're going to serve, what prince, what power of darkness you're going to love. Because I've had a lot of defectors in my life too that have withdrawn unto the death of Satan's government instead of fighting for their own good spirit. And it's kept them from growing up for a lot of years. But you know, some of those women are getting turned on by reproof and correction. And it's joyous. It makes every day I suffered and learned a little more myself well worth walking in love and faith with people. Amen.